Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shai from uh, the Cloudify team, and we are in the space of orchestration. And uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, edge orchestration. So all, as all of you know, the big master cl uh, cloud is going to broken to edge clouds because of many reasons. Uh, there are many use cases like connected cars, augmented reality, smart city, but their main two-fold reasons are latency. You know, sometimes you need to uh, actually respond immediately in less than 20 milliseconds. So you cannot send all the requests and responses to the main cloud, but you have to process it at the edge. And the second main reason is you don't want to uh, actually send enormous data point. I call it tsunami of data points uh, from the edge to the main cloud. So you are going to have thousands or uh, hundreds of thousands of, cl of clouds. So basically, uh, you can see here that uh, you can have an edge cloud at the ship. So there is a cruise ship. Uh, people want to play, to uh, do gambling, to uh, play games at airplanes. Uh, and the bandwidth is scarce. Sometimes uh, you know, a satellite connects it, sometimes uh, there is no connection, network connection. So there are a lot of uh, challenges running an edge cloud. One of the challenges is actually, uh, let's say, it's a resource constraint. It's a very low uh, footprint. And that's what I'm going to show in the demo. We, uh, together with uh, one of the telcos we created, actually uh, Kubernetes on top of OpenStack and we use function as a service and not containers because containers, it's, uh, even though they are ephemeral, but they are a big unit of work and they stay f forever even though they are ephemeral. So we used function as a service, we used kubeless uh, to run uh, different uh, car types and I will uh, show this. Just to complete the challenges, you can see that uh, uh, there are a lot of security issues here, bandwidth cost, uh, scale, sometimes uh, the edge is not connected to the master so it needs to work autonomously so you need to have an edge orchestrator that does all the life cycle operations including healing and scaling and uh, let me get into the demo because I have only 10 minutes so basically uh, uh, I say this uh, container is still a larger execution of uh, work so we moved from monolithic to containers to VMs containers and now we move to function as a service. Function as a service, they are good for event triggering. They are not good for long running processes. Like if you have a daemon that needs to run forever, don't use FAS for that. So um, just uh, on the, in a nutshell, there are two models actually, uh, or even three models to uh, manage an edge. One is a controller and a master orchestrator. And the master orchestrator just uh, sends commands to the controller, but the master orchestrator actually is responsible for all the work and the controller just take uh, actions at the edge. Um, a more advanced one is actually to have autonomous uh, edge orchestrator that has its own lifecycle events, but when there is no network connection, it knows to the agents, they know to actually aggregate all the information and uh, when connection uh, returns back uh, to synchronize with the master. The master will be served actually to manage all clouds and if you learn something in one of the edges, you can uh, tell the master to populate this knowledge to the other edges. Uh, so basically we developed in, at Cloudify actually a manager of managers and a way to that a master manager can uh, communicate with uh, edge orchestrator and for example uh, in the case of NAV uh, provision and manage uh, VNFs at the edge and even uh, lighter uh, workloads um, as function as a service that I will show you now. So basically the demo that we did is based on um, a master cloud uh, that uh, is based on ONAP. Uh, it has Kubernetes uh, and Cloudify is the orchestrator. We presented everything in Grafana and Prometheus. Uh, we designed everything in SDC, that's the service design and creation of ONAP. And then each one of the edges, uh, we simulated car traffic actually coming from uh, each car. Each car actually sends the location. And uh, the main reason, how many times you use Google Maps or Waze and you run into a traffic jam, and then it tells you, okay, turn right, but you're already stuck in a traffic jam. So we calculated a rectangle around each one of the edges 
and uh, we counted the number of cars or the density and we knew that if uh, you have uh, many cars at that edge, uh, maybe it's worth sending the car through a different route to get faster to the destination. So basically we simulated this with an IoT gateway sending request here and um, uh, the platform actually, the function created uh, a prediction and told each car where to go. So. Um, the architecture was like that. So the car sends request to the MQTT gateway, which then uh, sent it to a fast engine. And here we modeled everything with Tosca, and uh, Tosca created a graph of nodes and relationships. So we uh, uh, manipulated everything in real time. And uh, for example, I discovered a new car, let's say Mazda, so I can add it to the model, to the graph. Think about the graph and memory. So I can add a new uh, car type and uh, with all the uh, pro properties and attributes. Uh, and then we kept all the locations in a persistent MongoDB database and presented it here. Let me show you how it looks like. So basically you can see here in Kubernetes uh, actually that all the pods, the different car types and the, the different functions. And uh, let me run the demo. It's a recorded demo. So we present this on a Google map. And uh, the one of you that actually uh, the, that are familiar with Boston will see the traffic jams there. But you see each car actually we calculated the density and we sent predictions to the cars where to go. So I'm, I'll try to find this. So you see this is the prediction where to go. And uh, basically each car type here, uh, the, each dot represents a different car type. And uh, we have Mazda for Toyota. And here at this place, at the Longfellow Bridge, we created another Tosca node that created a traffic jam. And the cars need to go here to this destination. And uh, you will see that some of the cars will be rerouted through a different route and will get faster to the destination. So I will run this uh, forward because I have limited time here. So you see some of the cars uh, take a different route and they go uh, from here. Okay, so the new, actually the, the car that did to the, the reroute uh, already reached the destination while the others are still driving. And everything here was done with uh, a function as a service on top of uh, Kubernetes using Kubeless and uh, on top of Acrino at the edge. Now, some providers actually want to uh, create uh, all this with uh, Kubernetes on a bare metal, even they don't want to use an ad stack. They just want to run bare metal because of scarce resources. Now, we presented everything in Grafana and uh, Prometheus was the agent that collected the data. So you can see the function uh, failure rate and the function call rate. And you can see that when we scaled, actually there are three ways to scale this uh, um, actually uh, prototype that we did. Uh, one way is to uh, scale the functions, add more functions uh, from, uh, for the same car type if there are more Toyotas, for example. The second one is to uh, add more uh, pods and uh, Kubernetes already takes part, take, uh, care of this and this is simple. And uh, also there is a way to add more nodes. So we implement the provider interface in Kubernetes so we can add more nodes to a running Kubernetes and they will be added to the cluster. So you can see here that when we create the load, um, there is a high function call rate, and then uh, we scale this and it gets down. Now I have one more minute just to summarize this. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, there are many use cases. This is only one example of that such a use case. What happened here? Okay, uh, so you have smart cities and transportation and defense and energy, etc. And uh, everything here was achieved using a Tosca model, which in Tosca it's very easy to define a topology and to define actually microservices. Uh, so you can see in Tosca you have a node that is contained in another node, a node could be connected to another node, and you can define uh, 
different services and different blueprints, and there is a master blueprint that can connect everything. So for example, you can run a VNF in its own blueprint, another VNF in its own blueprint, you can add another blueprint on the fly and connect it to the graph. And uh, basically, everything is like Lego blocks. So the moment that you uh, modular, uh, define it in a modular way, you can extend it and slice and dice it like a Lego. And uh, that's very easy. So uh, it was uh, pretty easy to define all this demo using a Tosca model. And we in Cloudify actually uh, orchestrate things using a Tosca DSL. So I'm done with time. So thank you.